today I'm going to show you the failover settings for the Play Audio 12 in Oracle X. So in Oracle X, I've selected my PA12, the audio tab, and we're going to go into our failover settings. So there's a lot happening here, uh, but we'll walk you through it to give you an idea. So the first thing is trigger mode. So the default setting is an audio tone. Uh, this is for automatic trigger. As you can see, auto arm is selected right here. Uh, if you deselect it, it'll just go gray. And it'll gray out this option. So you just need to click on that guy. If it's not already clicked, it should be. Um, audio tone is the initial setup one, uh, but you can also use a MIDI stream. So if you had a constant MIDI uh, a bit of MIDI information going, you could actually set it up so that if that MIDI uh, gets interrupted for a certain period of time, that it will fail over and go to the second uh, USB or CNB. Um, now, Audio Tone, how it works is by default, it's set up on the 13th channel. Um, and if it sees a gap in audio for a long enough time, in this situation, it's two milliseconds is the timeout then it will switch to scene B. You can also use either. Um, so you can do either audio or MIDI, or you can use both. And so but in, so in the either case, it could be if audio fails, if audio has a gap, it fails over. If MIDI has a gap, it fails over. So it only takes one of them to actually trigger the, the failover. If you have used both, that means that both audio and MIDI have to fail at the same time for the right amount of, uh, however you have it set for the right amount of milliseconds, and then it will switch over to C and B. Then we have the auto switch back to A, scene A. Um, so basically what this is, is by default, the device switches from scene A to scene B. Uh, if you enable this option right here, the device will then, if, if you have a problem on the B computer, it will automatically switch back to A once that's up and running. Um, it will wait until you actually get the A computer set before it switches back. So I'm just going to leave that off for now in the default settings. So and that was the trigger mode. Now let's look at the triggers within those specific modes. So the audio trigger right here, we get a few options. We have host connected. Um, so that's if it doesn't see any audio at all, like uh, it's the PA12 actually gets disconnected. Um, USB power, that kind of thing uh, disconnects, then it will fail over. Um, audio recognize, and this is if any audio is recognized at all in any output. Um, if that gets cut, then it will fail over. The failover signal means that you can sp uh, pick a specific audio channel and if it doesn't see audio on that channel uh, for a spe specified amount of time, uh, it will fail over to C and B. So I'll show you the host connected first. So host connected right here, you can see there's no audio channel because it doesn't rely on that. Um, and it just needs, in any of these scenarios, you can set an audio timeout. Um, so if it doesn't, uh, it's not really going to matter a whole lot if, but I would set this at two or one, whatever. Um, but if it actually gets physically disconnected, the PA12 is not seen anymore. Uh, it'll automatically fail over uh, from computer one. It'll automatically fail over to scene B. Um, so if someone comes by and trips up in the USB one cable, it'll switch to USB two. For the second one, we have audio recognize. So I'm going to click on that. And you see it also doesn't specify an audio channel because it's looking at all channels. So if all channels uh, cut audio for, in this case, two milliseconds, then it will switch to scene B. Now again, you can change this. Uh, if you have a song that loads really slow, it's got a bunch of plugins and that kind of stuff, you know it's gonna load a little bit of time and you're gonna, you're gonna probably get a little bit of cut. You can change it. You can slowly increase it as much or as little as you need. Uh, this is something you may need to play with if you are having that issue. Uh, if you have a rather speedy setup, you shouldn't have any problems with it. The third option is failover signal. 
So in this case, you can see the audio channel specified. Uh, we specified audio channel 13, which if you look at the interface, it does not have a physical audio channel 13. This is only virtual, so your software will see this channel. Uh, it may also see a channel 14, which is not used for anything. Um, audio channel 13 is where you would want to set your tone or your failover signal, something that's consistent and constant, because as soon as that tone is gone, for two milliseconds in this case, then it will switch over to CMB. So hopefully that helps you get the audio trigger option down. Let's switch to use MIDI. So it's grayed out. You can see it's grayed out now the audio area and we're gonna look at the MIDI trigger. So the MIDI trigger, um, very similar. Uh, host connected is the exact same thing um, where if it doesn't see the device after, in this case, 100 milliseconds, which if you're gonna use host connected, you might want to uh, push that down quite a ways. Um, it will just switch over to CMB. If you go to MIDI recognized, again, it's MIDI recognized in general. So if there's, if MIDI, all MIDI is completely cut from the Play Audio 12 on scene A, it will switch to CMB um, and it will do it if it doesn't see it for 100 milliseconds in this scenario. Again, you can put this amount up or down. 100 millisecond is uh, the recommended or uh, default time. And we also have failover signal. So you can select whichever channel you want. Um, it's totally up to you. Just pick one that uh, isn't being used by something else. Uh, most people probably pick 15 or 16 just to be the last one. And again, it'll time out after 100 milliseconds. Now the last section here is a interesting section. It's actually what happens when I switch from scene A to scene B MIDI wise. Um, so this is gonna send, these are messages that are sent um, to the devices that are connected. Um, so we'll show you the different types. So you have a message type. Um, obviously you can turn this on or off as needed. Uh, so it's on at the moment, uh, but you can do sustain pedal off, the message type, all sound off, all notes off, reset all controls. Now this is important because you don't want to get hung notes, you don't want to get uh, wrong messages sent uh, as it's switching if it needs the switch. Um, the only thing worse than having to switch to the back over is the fact that you know, you're worried about what's going to happen to the gear on stage and that kind of thing. And we don't want uh, any any extra hanging information there. So we're sending messages to the device. You can pick which message you want and you can pick which channel you would like those on. Um, I would definitely recommend selecting all channels and I would recommend sending all ports. Um, this is always a good practice. So when it switches scenes, if you have a sustain on, it's not just gonna continue holding that note, it'll actually switch over to the other scene, it'll cut that note, and then it'll pick up on the second scene, which is a lot better. Hopefully that helps you out, and you understand our advanced settings here for the Play Audio 12 a little better. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Thanks.